Every child grew up playing games, and Pokemon cards are one of those games that most of us know, but how many of us still brings our childhood with us? Hi, this is Bryler, and welcome to another episode of Cultivating the Masses. My guest this week is Arvind Akilan. He's a barber, entrepreneur, and the only stage two judge for Pokemon trading card game for Malaysia. For those of you that doesn't know, Pokemon Trading Card Game is an international competitive event for the Pokemon community. I discussed with him what was the journey like climbing up the ladder, both as a judge and a competitive player. He has traveled around the world to represent Malaysia in pursuing his passion. Here we dug deep in his mind what it's like to pursue his passion despite having setbacks from his family and relatives. This podcast is a collaboration between Renegade Radio and Culture Talent. Now let's dive straight in. Hi dude. What's up bro? How are you? Yeah. I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm good too. Yeah, that's good to hear. Basically, Aravan here, he's a, uh, he's a guy that I know through Kevin from Renegade Radio. Kevin suggested us to bring you over and he gave a whole list of why we should invite you over. And I thought that's, and Azrul and I, we thought that's a very interesting topic to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. It's basically how you actually turn your passion into your, if you might say that way, your side hustle, yeah. right? So I think that's a great, interesting topic to talk about. Yeah. Uh, but first of all, before we start, I think I have to ask these questions, this question real quick. Share with us one or two things about Pokemon that none of us know of. Any facts, like literally any. Okay, um, <laughs> well, um, if we're going to go for it in general, mm-hmm. uh, everyone thinks, you know, like there, there are a few theories on, on Pokemon, which Pokemon is the first Pokemon right. kind of thing. So uh, in the game, it was uh, uh, Bulbasaur as right. ranked number one mm-hmm. Pokemon. Uh, but... But that's not the first Pokemon. Right. All right. So the first Pokemon that was uh, officially that was announced was Arceus, which was uh-huh. the god of Pokemon. Right. I've heard about this yes. before. Yes. The god of Pokemon. Yeah. Interesting. So there was debates actually between Mew and Arceus because right. Mew is also the first Pokemon to to uh, create all life forms of Pokemon. Right. So the question diverts back to who mm-hmm. created Mew. Right. And then that's when RCS. So if the people's gonna ask how RCS come, it's Big Bang Theory. Right there. <laughs> Boom, just right there. Yeah, man, that's interesting. I've been I've been wanting to share that with my friend, but I can't remember the name of the Pokemon. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Pokemon itself. What is your day to day job, and does it revolve around your passion, which is Pokemon trading Cut. game card? All yeah. right. So my day to day job is I run business. Mm-hmm. So we I have my own family business. I've uh, been successfully running it for sixty years actually. Wow. Yeah, and uh, we do barbering, mm-hmm. uh, and I manage them right now. So I haven't uh, fully take over because me and my dad are collaborating right. because I'm still focused in Pokemon and uh, it does not revolve around my passion, but mm-hmm. it do support my passion. Right. Because um, at first uh, when I took Pokemon, it was just a game. It was just a childhood game, right. but uh, as time goes, I started to uh, wanting to do something, you know, like like really uh, win it all and get something, get that that name right. that I played Pokemon. Right. So uh, I started to slowly get into the game from player to judges and then now competitive player, and uh, my my business actually supports me in terms of my fundings, the cards that I need for the game and. Pretty much a moral support from the, my own shop uh, uh, workers, actually. They right. themselves, uh, with limited knowledge on Pokemon, they still support me in terms of... Like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, man. yeah. They're, they're, they're not even from here, actually. They're from right. from uh, India. But then mm-hmm. um, uh, they know that I'm doing something. That's all they know. And they just give me that, that push. So yeah. I think if it's a revolving, no. But if it's supporting, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, man. Yeah. Also, that business that you're doing is also for uh, sustainability, I believe, mm-hmm. right? Yep. To keep you going with your passion yep. and so on. That's great, man. That's really amazing. I had a haircut there before. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> I had I had like a slight uh, men bun going on yeah. <laughs> from that place itself. <laughs> Thanks for supporting, bro. That's, hey, no worries, yeah, man. It comes back to there actually. Yeah. <laughs> <all the time. laughs> 
How did you get into playing Pokemon trading card game at the first place, and when did it begin? So, uh, first of all, before all this trading card game, it's how I got into Pokemon mm-hmm. was when I was seven. Right. And um, I had this uh, neighbor, who was a Chinese kid. Uh, we were both seven, and uh, we met uh, just on the road. Like, like I just saw him, and then he we start chatting. Mm-hmm. And then next two days, he was like, "Well, I watch cartoon at my place," and I'm like, "Yeah, let's go watch cartoon." Right. And uh, that's the first time I watched Pokemon. Mm-hmm. So the song was catchy, of course. <laughs> yeah. So we got it. Like I was really into the ga- uh, to the Pokemon uh, show, and uh, I got atti- addicted to it. Like, like I wake up just to watch it like like no matter how how early it is like 7 a.m right that's the time right. that actually inspired me to like just yeah. get into the to the show kind of thing and, right. and and it really really helped me um you know like uh just being quiet you know i start start chatting up because till i was seven my parents said i'm really quiet like i don't talk much and this kid actually changed everything like he came and he just introduced this this show and and that's how Pokemon like really came into my life. Right. So uh, moving forward, like after like um, when I was eighteen, um, I joined uni. Uh, I saw a bunch of people actually playing uh, Pokemon on mm-hmm. the open foyer, and it, it it really hit me like wow, like after a few years, I'm seeing mm-hmm. back the game, and um and I've now played the card game before, so I was so keen. So uh, uh, I started the ge- like I I started to like approach the guy and I'm like oh like I want to know about this so he's a close friend last time and um we 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 were like uh going through card game shops from from Klanajaya to to uh Damansara right. to to PJ so th- there are a few card shops around and uh, I started as a loser first. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, like, you you have yeah a place you to have start, to you start know, as a you gotta start like, somewhere. Like I st- I came with decks that doesn't even make sense. Like, right. like <laughs> it's like turn one, turn two, that's it, game over. And I'm like, right. that's it, that's the game about. And then mm-hmm. my friend like, no, it's not. Like, that's the game about. So we picked up like I picked it up from there. Um, it was going for like almost uh, two years playing casually mm-hmm. and uh, understanding. But on my first year itself of learning the game. Within uh within six months of uh of being in the game, I played the uh Indonesian regional championship. So that was right. my first ever travel, uh for for Pokemon. And after two years. No, no, on, on the first year of knowing the game itself. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, on six months, right? Knowing the game, like six months after knowing the game, uh, I went uh for for the Indonesian regional because I never been to Indonesia. So I thought, okay, might as well just make it like a trip where you can both go for sightseeing and also play Pokemon. Right. And my friends was very uh, encouraging and supporting. So they all followed me as well. Like they, we all went as a group of mm-hmm. Malaysians. And on my, that was my very first event. That means I've never attended any local events yet. All right. So right. and uh, on the, I still remember that night itself, like when we started playing, like we were practicing Pokemon. And, uh, and one of my uh, friend, now my mentor, Right. Uh, he just came up to me. He's a Singaporean. He came up to me and he was like, "Oh, you're playing good, for for a new starter. Uh, keep it up." And that's that's the word you need to hear, you know, from. Right. And exactly. I didn't even know he was a good player at that time mm-hmm. period. Like until my friend come to that guy is like the top sixteen it's in world legend. championship. Yes, he's like <laughs> top sixteen in world championship. I'm like, right. what? And 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 we. Uh, the very next day we played and I made it to the qua- to, to the semi final actually. Like mm-hmm. I played until making it to the semi final and 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 everyone was like, dude, you just started playing and wow. and like, like it was really inspiring because right. it's like, uh, it was a unique idea. Like I came up, uh, there are many kind of players and I'm a player who plays with unique decks, like decks that really doesn't exist much. Like you come up with right. just purely by your own. You don't copy people's idea kind of thing, and that's been my style actually for right. the, the entire seven years of playing. Right. So uh, and I lost to. In in the in the semi final, the mentor itself, like I met him in, oh. in the semi final. Uh, it was all connected. The guy who just said that yeah, you're doing great a, for a, a start a day, a, right. a day uh, before the tom- uh, competition, and you were like, "Wow, like what's the coincidence of being right. there?" But I think like that was a good stop for me over there because mm-hmm. that made me to 
really push into the game right. furthermore as days goes by actually yeah Right, you know when you mentioned just now earlier that this uh, that's the kind of word that you want to listen from someone to yep. keep you going. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want to share a little bit of experience from my side. Uh, sure. Just a few days ago, I went for a boxing training, right? And my coach, when he was doing, when I was doing all the conditioning training, and it was like, dude, you're a natural man. I'm like, nice. <laughs> it, it, wanna, it, it makes you want to keep going. Yes, you know? definitely. Yeah, so I bet you felt that 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 way too, and yep. you're like. Man, I should really pursue this. Yeah, I mean, that's, this, that's right? the words that we should actually uh, start giving to people. Actually, I mean, that, yeah. like the only problem for talents is that there are no people to say to them, "You're doing fine. You, you're on the right tra- track, right. and and you're gonna go way further than mm. where you are right now." These are the words that every single person who who wants to hear this, right, who exactly. can do something way bigger exactly. than what they are right now, to be heard right now. Yep. Exactly, I agree. A lot of people go through their life wanting to pursue some sort of passion, mm-hmm. you might say that way, but they just don't get enough support, right? That's right. Especially, I think I want to go back to our Asian mentality. Yeah. The parents' mentality, yep. right? You have to be a doctor, you have to be Definitely. a lawyer, <laughs> you have to be an engineer, architect, and so on and so on, right? Yep. And when you suddenly propose this new idea of like, hey, I want to be something different, right? And they're, they're going to go, What? <laughs> yeah, crazy about that, right? They're like, no, 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 no. You're supposed to be a doctor. Yeah. I sent you to school. I sent you to this place. You gotta be that. And it pressures us as you know the youth. And yeah, maybe limits, that is something that you want to share. Exposure, to. actually, it limits yeah. what it limits us from doing what we want than what to be done, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Did you experience that on your personal life? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, to be honest, yes. Uh, The start was rough, right. so um, everyone was just thinking it's a waste of time. Like the uh, first thing they came up with, like you're wasting your money. Uh, this is a childish game, and this is not something you should be doing. Like you should be focusing on your studies. Like I was doing mass communication at that time period. Oh, high five, dude! Yeah, man. I was I I was doing actually previous like when I was eighteen to nineteen, I was doing uh, natural science. And mm-hmm. uh, naturally, uh, at maths wasn't my thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, I I kind of knew what was my flaw in that. So I thought, okay, something that's not math related was um, mass communication, and I loved it. Like it was really yep, nice. Yep, yep. And that's when I was like, all right, let's let's get this game. Like like we need to go far. We need to be seen. We need to be. We need to inspire people. You know, like like picking up a hobby isn't wrong, and. Bringing the hobby to a professional level, yep. it's something that people want to see. Mm-hmm. You know, like there are tons of players, uh, people, sorry, tons of people who, who likes to do something but they they can't because the community just suppress them. Yes, right? exactly. And and by community, we are talking about our parents, relatives. Actually, like for me, compared to my family, it was relatives actually, and. Mm-hmm. Um, Uh, and the backfire was a lot at first, and when they start seeing me on like international, uh, medias and and live streams, that's when they start you know like okay he's doing something right. like that kind right. of thing. So it took me about three years to f- sorry four years actually to prove mm-hmm. my worthy in the game and also what I'm doing is right. All right. So one thing that um, uh, for whoever it is pursuing actually is just that. If you're studying, if you're facing pressure, just don't stop that. If it took me four years, it could take you seven years, it could take you even exactly. one year. But where you stop is where you decide what to be done. Actually, mm-hmm. if you stop, it's not up to them. It's yeah, you who crazy. stopped it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the more like you gotta not stop. Mm-hmm. Don't let someone else to stop. You have to say to yourself, "Yeah, I'm done." Right, like, right. And, and don't finish. I mean, don't don't end it just because you can't. Do just end it once you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is really amazing to hear yeah. that, man. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of people stop doing stuff because yeah, they just give up. Yeah, they yeah. they either just give up because they can't do it anymore, or it's because of other people's yes, opinion, external pressures. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's that's the toughest part for a lot of people yes, actually, exactly. especially in this era, man. Yep, oh, uh, we're not facing we're facing three generations actually. Right, like from our grandfather, like for me, it was my grandfather. Like he was one of the most. Uh, Uh, that the person who was like, no, you should not do this. To now, the best supporter. 
Oh really? Right now he's like, oh, like right. I'm going trip. He's like, okay, you come back. You, I need to sponsor your trip. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> like, 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 like. Every time I get his blessings before I leave, like my grandparents are like really close to me. Mm-hmm. Like who, they just need to know that we're doing it right. Right. And for them to know that is we don't give up. Mm-hmm. You know, like if we, if we ourselves don't believe in our 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 passion, our dreams, then who else gonna mm-hmm. believe in it? Like yep. we're we're the sole purpose of it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, th- th- it took me four years. <laughs> yeah, I can't really blame them as well as much as you know, like a lot of people are saying, oh, parents should change their mindset and so on. But yeah. because I do believe, if I try to position myself as a parent, right, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want my children to take the risk as well. Do yes, that's right? right. That's right. So I totally understand where our parents are coming from. It mm-hmm. just. They just need, like, as you mentioned, they just want to know whether you're doing it right. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. That's a lot of powerful terms yeah, you throw thanks, out there, man. man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When were you start recognized by the Pokemon Judge team itself? And what was the first thing that comes out from your mouth as soon as they approach you? Okay, so um, I was in the judge team. For, I mean, I was a judge for two years. So the first thing I came as a judge, so Southeast Asia judge and... And um, and uh, other country judges, there's a lot of uh, different things set aside. Which is number one is we don't really get compensated for a lot of things. Like we don't get mm-hmm. like like American judges or Australian judges for whatever judging they do for an event. They get right. things given. Like for example, a booster box of Pokemon cards, which can cost easily Malaysian ringgit of five hundred to six hundred. Oh man! So those are things are very good for them, like as a compensation for judging. But in Malaysia, we don't get those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Like in Asia, uh, we're limited resource. We are being run by a third-party company uh, under Pokemon. So, so we are doing it willingly, like f- to the to help out the community properly. And uh, it started as just a local judge to understand the company community well for right. me. And then I got inspired by the the former head judge himself. Uh, he was he was a really nice guy who. Who tolerates the community? The community can be really, um, let's put it in Pokemon terms, childish in terms of right. like you know, like we are kids when we play Pokemon cards. We are kids by heart, actually. Right. So, yep. so that 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 uh, character tends to come out all the time, mm-hmm. and uh, and he handles it really, really maturely. Like he can he can stand that, and he taught me all those kind of things. And after one year, he retired from judging, and he passed the mantle down to me. To be the head judge of Malaysia. Wow. So when I become head judge of Malaysia, the first thing for me it was like I want to bring it to the next level. So uh, and this guy still helped me by um, wh- where there was an international championship and he he messaged the organizers of the international championship telling that uh, I would be a suitable uh, judge for the event uh, to be helped out and um, they sent me a letter uh, a, an email regarding. Um, why would you be qualified for the event? So we had to fill in the gap, and we did, I did. And in a month time, they messaged me, congratulations, uh, we have selected you for our judge team. Uh, would you uh, would you join us for the uh, Oceania International Championship? And I look at the email. Uh, I was right beside my dad, and this was 2017, right, two years back. And right, I was like, back. and I did not expect to pass actually like mm-hmm. because I just feel that you know I'm always unlucky in terms of right. getting it and, and because it's sponsored one thing is that they f- gave you flight they give you hotel and it's a whole new experience mm-hmm. for, mm-hmm. for being an international judge and I look at my dad and I start like, like I don't, I'm like like I don't know what to say like like right. I, was st- I was like totally speechless like, like there was no words coming out of me and my dad was like what's wrong are you okay? Are you choking or something? I'm like, no. <laughs> like, like, I got this email and I showed him an email and he's like, congratulations, that's that's a good news. And I'm like, yes, like it's a really big news. So when I, and, and I confirmed the email by saying, yes, I would like to join. And then um, next thing you know, they send me like e- details on my flights and everything. And then I just get in the flight, right. go there. And then I meet the head judge and I was like, straight a hug. Like, mm-hmm. thank you for, you know, like accepting oh, me. Crazy, because man. things escalated real good. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I when I was uh, invited there because I was supposed to be just a helper, right? All right. As j- when when uh, stage one, there are three stages for a judge, just like how Pokemon evolves. Mm-hmm. Basic <laughs> stage one and stage two. Right, right, so right. that's how we we keep our turn. So basic are people uh, judges who can judge local events. 
Stage one are judges who can uh, judge local events, can be the head judge for an event and also of uh, head judge for local events, and also judge international. Mm-hmm. Uh, required under supervision, and stage two is they are they are capable to judge at world championship. They can run their uh, they can be head judge for even international events, or they can even be a head judge for local events. So right now I'm one of the few stage two judge in in mm-hmm. Asia actually. Wow. Yeah, there's only like two or three. Oh crazy! Yeah, man. in Asia, and um, and uh, when I was going to international championship, I was just stage one. Right. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna be a helper. Mm-hmm. So the the American judge, who was the head judge, he just came to me and he was like, "Oh, you, you're communicating quite well with the international players," and I'm like, "Yeah, we, we learn English too." <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh," and and he likes it because. You know, like we have uh, some Asians who have a uh, language barrier in terms of accent, right? Right. So, mm. so and like if you're gonna go talk to a Russian uh, guy who speaks in English, you're gonna have really bad accent barrier. Right. Right. And 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 for me, I still can understand very well. Mm-hmm. So the second day of the event, I, I like first day I was just helping out, you know, going around, looking around, making sure play don't cheats. I come back. The second day, I uh, second day was the bigger like like qualified event. A uh, qualified player goes into the the second day, and then we have to judge them. And they are really, really, really professional players. And then, like it was seven in the morning, the head judges come to me, and then they ask, "Uh, so how are you feeling today?" I said, "I'm good. I'm good." And then he's like, "All right, you're on stream." And I'm like, "What?" Like, like only the high rank judges be on stream. Why am right. I getting to be on the stream? And then he's like, "Cause you're communicating well with players." So that's nice, the main attributes nice. as a judge, and no Malaysian players or uh, in Asia just on, like uh, as in like Southeast Asia. There's only one judge I know, which was the head judge for whole Southeast Asia, gets right. to be on stream. So right. I'm the second one. Not even my former head judge was on stream oh before. So it felt such big responsibility, right. and it felt really proud, you know, as mm-hmm. a Malaysian, mm-hmm. to be there, like like as uh, to guide them. They're telling that you can do this as well. If I can, you can. That kind of thing. So it was big. Like I was on yeah. stream, and it was. All around Twitch, if you guys have heard Twitch before, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Twitch, Twitch TV, is for, like yeah. for gaming channels, right, and stuff. right. So I was on live on Twitch, Man. all right, and 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 YouTube. So it was really proud moments for me. Right. So that was that was like that that time when they recognized me for right. the start of team. It was a bliss actually. Man, I mean, I have a question. When you first received that email, right? What was the feeling that you get? When you know that is something that you didn't know that's gonna happen, like you just, from what I'm hearing, you're just gonna try it out yeah. and see how it that's turns right, out, right. right? But that feeling was it like emotional and all that? Like you're you're finally showing it to your parents, yeah. and then you're like, hey, yeah, it was it was really right? it's like entering Harvard. Yes, exactly, yeah, exactly. It was <laughs> right. it was it was really crazy because. Um, I never expect the journey wasn't planned that way. We don't right, plan our journey. Right, yeah, like things can go just exactly better bro. than we expect. Actually, yeah. So when I when I got into live stream, the first thing I told my dad, like I start WhatsApping my dad and like, pa, like watch me on live stream and <laughs> like another thirty minutes time I'll be on live stream. My dad was like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, "Yes, I'm serious." Like I'm like going to be on live stream and then I said I'll tell you the details as in like what happened, why I got chose. And the next thing I was like, texting my friends like, guys, I'm on live stream. Right. Because <laughs> Malaysian players are looking. They always watch, and Malaysian players are really dedicated. Actually, in terms of they would keep themselves awake like six a.m., five a.m. just to watch the live stream of players going around. So, uh, that's a that's a good uh, feeling actually to know yeah. that everyone's committed for the for the game. <laughs> it's amazing. Yep. man. I think this is the part where it gets. Emotional, mm-hmm. right, and intense. Let's say that way. A lot of people go through their day doing what they love, but there are times when they really, really feel like giving up, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I myself, I just experienced that a couple of weeks ago, oh, where right. I really questioned the decisions I made for my entire life, right? Mm-hmm. But luckily, due to some other friends, I managed to pull myself through, right? Mm-hmm. But my question here is, what was the worst moment that you ever felt like giving up, and how did you overcome? There are many times I felt like giving up, but right. those were like still um, very minor. Like mm-hmm. times when parents will be like very unsupportive mm-hmm. at the start, at the first year, very unsupportive, and we'll be like, "Do we really need this game? Do we really need to chase this passion?" Then there are times where 
let's say in college your grades start falling down and that's the second time I'm like or maybe I should step back from the game like I have to 100% focus on, on the college but every time there will be a different factor that would come in to yep, play yep. For, for me to uh, not to give up like it could be friends it could be uh, my own sister I mean it's, it's nothing bro you can do this you can you, you just need to try to time manage kind of thing but the worst that I felt was this year itself when I was going competitive playing so uh, there are there are times where uh, we always have to travel to to get points for championship world championship and there was one point of time I had a streak of losses for uh-huh. all the events that I've been attending so it was to sit uh s- Melbourne Sydney uh, sorry Melbourne Perth and Indonesia so this three I didn't get the points that I was targeting right all right and 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 Melbourne and Perth was r- no points at all that means I went there for a complete waste mm-hmm. of time waste of money like when I went to uh Melbourne International I couldn't uh, get into the points level and that's the time I was like dude something is wrong and when I went put the required number to be to get minimum points was top 16 I was number 17 that's the first time actually I sat down like I didn't even see the results I knew like like my friends didn't show an expression that I went got in like they just gave me that no bro so I sat down on the table and I cheered for the first time right. for Pokemon. And another friend of mine who is uh, also the number one Malaysian player, mm-hmm. number two in Asia, he came to me, he hugged me, he's like, bro, like you can't let this affect you at all. And I'm like, I don't know, man, it's so tiring to to do this. Like, like I've been right. traveling uh, almost four countries already when I was in Perth. That was my fourth country mm-hmm. for that time period. And uh, I was like, it's really tiring to to not get points especially when it's back to back kind mm-hmm, of thing mm-hmm. so he was like you're just not finding the right deck for you you're not you just need to start back unique ideas on your own because the two competition that i played uh both were not my ideas i just copied an idea and played and it was not kind of my kind of style and that actually led to my losses actually mm-hmm. So I was really bummed out and I came back home. I was not feeling myself. I was like, maybe I should stop traveling. Maybe qualifying for the world championship is enough. Maybe I should not go for day two. Day two means qualifying to the top eight of Asia. Right. And my mentor, the Singaporean guy, his name mm-hmm. is Clifton. Mm-hmm. So he called me up and he was like, bro, this isn't something that you want to stop for now. You know, like no new players, no no uh, players that just start up on your first year competitive would have done how much you have done right now right like your your points are really high and if you stop now you're just sending the wrong messages to those who are looking at you mm. like like those who are being inspired by you those who are uh living up to you looking up to you kind of thing they'll be like oh even one of the guy who's been doing real good as well can give up anytime are mm-hmm. you going to send that kind of message and i'm like no, I'm not going to send that kind of message. And then the same time my dad came to me, he's like, what are you giving up for? Are you are you old to tell that you're tired of traveling? Mm. That Like no one gets the opportunity to travel all right. the time. Here we are telling you to travel. Mm-hmm. So what what what's stopping you from traveling? And I'm like, okay, that's that's something that I want to hear from my dad. Like my dad says, don't, don't stop. That's the exact time that he told me mm-hmm. the same thing I, I, I told you, that don't stop. When you feel like giving up, right? Stop when you're done. That mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I was like, okay, let's let's just take it up and start running back. And and um, I went to Philippines. The following event was Philippines, and I got into the semifinal. <laughs> so that oh. was like a giant leap. And and to do that, I found something unique. The deck ideas that was unique for myself, and right. and I created it. It was first of its kind, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And it became like a uh, well-known kind of deck oh, at that really? time period. Yeah, it was very sensational because it was a bizarre idea right. that was uh, brought to a very high level. My friend played it and he made it to top 10 Europe International Championship. So that was, and Europe was like 1,200 players. Mm-hmm. So to make it with that deck 
into that level was just crazy for anyone right. to see. And they were like, I said, maybe the failure was a good thing. Yeah. Maybe the worst moments are the moments where pushes you. It's right. all about how right. you take it. Like, are you going to take it in yeah. the wrong way? Or are you going to like really push it out? Mm-hmm. Like, take that failure to drive for your success. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what wh- what I was about to t- tap into as well. Like, from what I'm hearing is that that setback that you were having mm-hmm. was the one that actually made you grow. Yes. And that's one of the most uh, miscommunicated in our current generation, mm-hmm. right? Whereby failure is like, failure or any sort of setback is like, you're done, you're completely done. Yes. But what people don't preach about is that, hey, dude, when you fail, when you have setbacks, that's when it really you really grow. Yes, that's right. That's, that's right. the that's growth. Really that, true. Yeah. And that's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah. I'm mean, having goosebumps actually yeah. right now speaking it was, about it. It was when, yeah. when when I was doing like honestly if I would have given up that that day yeah. I wouldn't be here actually yeah. <laughs> saying you telling you all this kind of thing. Right. And also there was that one event was needed for me. Like I really needed that failure. Mm. Not the kind of failure where you just face normally but the failure that right. really puts you in an emotional place yep, yep. where you it really touched my alter ego like dude if you're failing with other people's idea then don't use other people's idea right touch your own idea mm-hmm. come up with something creative like I actually sorry I made it to semi-final in in Malaysian local event with the deck mm-hmm. and that straight away I brought the event the deck to Philippines and right. got it semi-final yeah, with that crazy tour. yeah and, and and it was crazy because it was an all out Malaysian semi-finalist that means all four mm-hmm. semi-finalists were Malaysians in Philippines so that was like really fun there was no stress there's no peer pressure it's just playing like you're practicing right <laughs> yeah. right. so it was like and when and and even though I was a semi-finalist but my deck was so unique that it felt like it wasn't yeah. it, it, it felt like you just won the tournament either right, way right yeah right. so it was it was good that I went through that kind of yeah, man. phase actually <laughs> amazing you brought a different meta yeah. right there yeah exactly yeah. yeah it's a totally different meta yeah. right all right what are your thoughts on believing in your own capabilities? Okay, um, believing in your own capabilities. Well, first of all, if it's not you, who else? You know, right. on your capabilities. And I believe that your belief in your capabilities is, shows how much of a successful person you will be. Not just mm-hmm. in your passion, but your whole life. Right. All right, so I- if you give up, that shows what kind of person you're going to be throughout your entire life. It can be even marriage. It can be even mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. That's the capability that you're setting right now. Right. Okay, so if you got to believe that, that whatever you're going to achieve, whatever you're going to um, uh, do in, in the future, you got to believe in yourself first. All right? And, and that alone shows how much of a person you are completely. Yeah, it defines yeah, who it you defines are. Yeah, it defines you. It literally defines you. Yep. Because whatever, uh, what you're portraying to others easily shows who you are. At that, at mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. age, especially when you're when you're young adults. Mm-hmm. Young adults are people who are still stuck in between that yeah, man. age to go up to a yep. whole new level. Yeah, tell me about it. still on that young level kind of thing. So yeah. we, we got to be um, very firm with what we want to do. And that comes from... Uh, our capabilities of handling things, our capabilities mm, of mm. trusting things, our capabilities of hoping for success, that kind of thing. You don't have yep. to really, you don't have to really win. You just need to try to win. Right. That's the matter. Yeah. All right? Try. Yeah. yeah. You got to try. It's, it doesn't matter if you fail. Yep. It doesn't matter if you win. It's about, have you tried first? Right. All right. right. That, alo- that itself is a success. Right. Like how, there are like tons of people died not trying a lot of mm-hmm. things. Are yeah. you going to be those kind of people? Yeah, man. <laughs> that's, yeah, the, that's, that's, that's the main thing. That's like, like you got to believe in yourself mm-hmm. first and what you are capable of bringing a, a whole new people from you. I mean, a whole new person from you. Right. Yeah, that's good. Amazing, bro. What's the purpose behind what you are doing today? What's the purpose? Yep. Uh, to prove a point, honestly. Mm-hmm. So, um, it started with me just being a fun player. Mm-hmm. Then it slowly escalated to being a judge to know the community. Then became a judge to uh, make Malaysian proud. Like in terms of Asia, like I want to be the first Malaysian judge to have the highest level of uh, rank in international judge. 
then it went to a competitive playing for to fit my own passion like you know like want to know uh how it feels to play in world championship kind of thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then finally um i just told to myself that you got to prove a point that any player in malaysia even if it's a new player they can come to my level they can go to world championship they can even win the world championship it's all about how much you dedicate yourself into the game right. that kind of thing and also to prove a point to uh, my relatives uh-huh that you should believe more in people mm. and mm. they are unique ideas because i know if i throw today a, a, an idea to my relative telling that hey pokemon is going to be the next thing that i'm going to do they're going to be like looking me up and down and be like this guy's not right yep set of yep. mind okay oh he should be away from my kids <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like he might influence them to play card games right, instead right. of studying and i have faced this personally actually like really? yeah i've been looked down on many occasions for doing this but the purpose i was uh, setting for my relatives was that i want to uh show them that this isn't something a child thing the only child thing about the whole game was just the outlook of the game right all right everything else is something mm-hmm. adult kind uh from the thinking skills mm-hmm. uh critical thinking creative thinking resource management time right. management all right. these plays big role in the game and that mm-hmm. sets you a sharper person mm-hmm. not just in the game but overall as a person for you and those people who used to tell dude you shouldn't be doing this Uh, you're like my son you shouldn't be like wasting your time mm-hmm. are the type of people right now who's really proud of what i'm doing right. like like my last international my last event for pokemon was the north american international championship and i did really good in it so as a as a malaysian player i ranked myself as 41 out of 1200 players oh my god yeah and that's the first to be done yeah Sorry. and um It was that moment my dad actually messaged me and he was like, "Hey, I'm at uh, this particular relative's home. They're having their housewarming." And I'm like, "Have fun, pa." And they were like, "I told about you." And I'm like, "Oh, you don't you shouldn't have, you know, like I didn't right, want my dad right. to go through those kind of thing." And they right. were like, "To my surprise, my dad the next line that came from my dad's mouth was like, "You made me proud." Wow. Because everyone's so happy. Like wow. like you're in America. They're in America playing game and 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 they they can they, they just can't believe that I'm r- right now in America right. playing a game and living a life. Mm-hmm. You know like I'm having fun right there. Right. Right and they were they just looked at my dad like some of them just came to my dad I'm really proud of what your son is doing like I hope my son could you know pick up something like that. That's the word right. I wanted to hear right. throughout the seven years that my son my daughter would pick up something new. And Indian mm-hmm. parents to say that easily is it's not easy actually right, right? right so okay. so when they they started to open up to let their child uh to pick up something new right. out of the box mm-hmm. that's when i knew i have accomplished what i wanted to do that's amazing yeah man. i have i have i have done my part of uh giving them the exposure that they need right to to let their kids to to mm-hmm. uh, venture out new things it mm-hmm. doesn't have to be just pokemon it could be anything right, right. because anything gaming is, yeah. and everything are something that's our generation mm-hmm. it's not their generation mm-hmm. and whatever new it's a fear for humans yep all right so definitely yeah, yeah to venture it out it takes the guts the people who are brave enough to venture it out is the one that stands out mm-hmm. the rest are followers so knowing that you cannot let them venture them by themselves you just need to give them the hope that things will be fine to yeah. venture out and i think yeah that's my yeah. that's the purpose actually i started out everything crazy yeah <laughs> oh, to listen to your dad saying that i'm proud yes, of you yes it was it was bliss actually <laughs> yeah man yeah my god let's say that somebody is feeling hopeless right now mm-hmm. they don't know if they should continue or start looking into different things What can someone do today in order to set themselves on the right path? Well, look back. You got to look back. Don't look back on what went wrong. Look back what made what went wrong. All right, for example, if you have a problem, don't find don't just see what's the problem all about. It's about what caused the problem in the first place, all right? So, 
if you're hopeless seek someone that gives you support it doesn't have to be family it just needs to be your friend mm-hmm. um your lover mm-hmm. or even even anything that inspires you it can be right, a right. kid it can be a photo all right just sit think for a second what made you to come this far all right and and are you going to just give up right there like how far of a journey you have come this far and what has inspired you to come this far mm-hmm. that's the thing you want to see when you're hopeless because right. because we lose hope because we are confused mm-hmm. or we are clueless of what we are doing yep so then get back to where the clue is you know right, like what right. what gave you the idea to do something you mm-hmm. know like like for me when when i went clueless for pokemon it all came back to the point where why did i start doing this what made me to do pokemon all right why did i decide to make it all the way to day 2 for world championship instead right. just stopping just by qualifying mm-hmm. it all because of the motivation i've been giving by by my friends mm-hmm. by my parents mm-hmm. so that's that's what the person has to do sit look back what was the problem what caused the problem and solve it up and right. you're going to be back on the right track on mm-hmm. right there right that moment actually yeah, man before we wrap up i just have two more questions to go all right What advice would you give to someone who just started out in anything? It can be Pokemon or anything in general. All right. Uh, well, if you're if you're a Pokemon, uh, please seek the local shops and players uh, like me or any other players out there that you may know to help you out. Right. Furthermore, like because they have the experience, they have. Um, the knowledge on the game way more than you think mm-hmm. and some are capable to teach you and guide you very well find a mentor you mean yeah uh for people in general who's right. starting things up start with start with a passion and a note in your head saying i give up it's not a word that you want to use anytime in your life it's mm-hmm. i'm done i've accomplished right. that's all that's matter yep so start something to end it not start something and leave it halfway hanging right right yeah that's that's very important because I like that, that man yeah that that gives you discipline on yeah. on whatever it is integrity yeah because yeah. okay to put something very small about myself that not many knows i have adhd all right cutting things off halfway is a thing for me right if i can hold myself till the very end anyone can Right. So do not leave it. Do not give excuses. Right. Telling that oh, I'm done. I mean, I, like I gave up because this is an obstacle. Mm-hmm. Find a way to beat that obstacle. Right. Yeah, that's right. it. <laughs> okay, a quick one. This is from my side mm-hmm. personally, right? You said find someone who had experience with it. Yeah. Find someone who know a lot more about it. Mm-hmm. Was there a point in time when you met these people, these individuals that has higher levels and so on from you, right? You talk with them, you discuss with them, and they actually make you feel like you're the student, right? You you just feel very timid, and you just want to listen, 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 yeah. listen, right? Do you think that's advisable, or what? What? What's your point? What's your take on that? Okay, line? um, a good listener is always a good achiever. That's mm-hmm. one thing that my dad always tells me. Uh, you don't have to always, you know, be timid to listen out hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Arguments gives better solutions. Okay. Arguments are the birth of new, uh, new questions. Right. Right. So, let's say if you feel like a student to someone, right, mm-hmm. and he being a teacher, then do your job as a student by asking more questions. Just listening nice. does not help you. That's very right. important. Yeah, you have to ask questions to your teachers to know. Mm-hmm. That's the. The basic thing we learned yeah. since we were primary. Mm-hmm. The students that don't ask the questions are the one who flunks the class. Yeah. <laughs> so do not keep yourself quiet. Yeah. Ask as many questions. A good teacher will never get stressed about it. He will always explain. Right. I had my teacher, my mentor. Mm-hmm. He really been the best guide for me in my life for for Pokemon, and it has it has brought me to where I am right now. So I don't think. That's wrong, you know. To yeah. ask. And I'm very argumentative. Right, I'm, very, right, right. I'm a person who really argues a lot. Actually, yeah. with him. The, yeah. reason, the reason why I ask is because 
a lot of the people that I know when they say look for a mentor and then when the mentor say do this do that do this yeah. do that and they just follow around and that yeah. turns out to be more of like a different thing yeah, you know it's right. no longer um, quick one don't look for a mentor you will know a person is a mentor mm. trust me like you don't have to find for one that person will be all the time beside you and you just need to make them your mentor Mm. They will give because it could be even your best friend, right? And he would have been giving advices all the time. You just not listening. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta just <laughs> look at those people that's beside you first. You don't have to find a guru. You don't have to find a mentor for something that you just started. Mm-hmm. In that time process, you will find one. All Because right. when you set someone as your mentor, and let's say if you don't like the way they teach, but you will be stuck. Because you chose that mentor, mm-hmm. but having someone that's already beside you, you're already comfortable with that person. Mm-hmm. So with them being a mentor will never be an issue for you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, don't look for a mentor. Just just go with the flow, yeah, and you will find, find one, one by yourself. Yeah. All right. That's, wow, man. That's advice I give. Yeah. Where can people find out more about what you do? Okay. So, f- uh, first thing for Pokemon, they can just. Visit Pokemon dot com to know Pokemon.com. everything about Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Second thing is local shops like they need the support actually. Mm-hmm. So there is one in uh, the main ones are Klanajaya, uh, in Klanajaya. They just need to put carts and hobbies. Another one is called as Toys Bar, mm-hmm. uh, in near Atria over there. Mm-hmm. So these two places are a very good head start. Like when you go there, mm-hmm. there are tons of players re- ready to help you out. Mm-hmm. Like you don't need to even. Have uh, anything with you? They have the cards. They have right. everything. They just sit and listen. And um, personally, you can approach me, right? Because uh, I'm still uh, the judge for Malaysia as well. Right. So I would gladly, personally, would guide you for right. all the all the things that you want to know about mm-hmm. it. And uh, and how do we do that? Uh, how do we approach you? Well, you can contact my Facebook. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so you can contact my Facebook. You just need to put my full name. All right. Or Adhavan Which Akilin. is? Adhavan Akilin. Okay. All right. So uh, I think later I can provide you the description. Right, actually. right. Uh, you can approach me and if you want to go competitive in this game, if you feel like this thing is something big, do approach me. I do know a source that could really help you out but it's not Malaysian based. Mm-hmm. But definitely, I can guarantee you, it would bring you to a world class l- player level in a year kind of thing nice. I can give you that or I can watch for you because I um, went through this per- particular individual and he he gave me just one hour of a pep talk and guide in Pokemon a day before the North American International and I made it to that level actually <laughs> so wow. one hour changed a lot in my life it really pushed like a year of experience another year of experience mm, mm, in Pokemon mm, mm, mm. just in one hour. So I feel that new players with, especially young players, I really would say young players in terms of like uh, juniors from uh, young five years old to 15. These age players adapt things very fast. They, their, their thought process, their critical thinking are super good. Mm-hmm. Try to make yourself sharp. If you come to games like this, it would keep you really sharp. Mm-hmm. Not just for the game, but right. every skills that sets mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. your time management, resource management, all these are really uh, sharpened out for you for future events and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, do join the game actually. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Do you have like a Twitch TV or Instagram? That uh, for you, myself, you? no. Okay. Um, we we have a uh, what is it a uh, a page actually that mm-hmm. actually posts local things called Team Rainbow Wing Team Rainbow Wing yeah so Rainbow Wing was like the uh, idea of a, 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 a feather from from the Pokemon called Ho-Oh oh right yeah so it's Ho-Oh. known as Rainbow Wing so we named it uh, it was a bunch of us who came up uh, as as a team to show local players that how much of events are going on and you know exit trust articles and stuff So uh, you can always look up to there to All know right. more things about it. Okay. That's good. <laughs> cool. We have reached to an end of our uh, <laughs> podcast interview it here. Was good, it was a good It was interview. a good one, yeah. man. Yeah, really. I've, 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 I've never knew that Pokemon can get really, really yeah. competitive in that way, you know? 
every gaming at this era is crazy. yeah it's crazy man it's how much you dedicate yourself yep. like don't if you're playing it for fun just play it for fun but don't discriminate it yep that don't is discriminate true. people who does it because you wouldn't know how much it means to them like for some people that game could be their life saver from yep. stress and depression yep yeah and then you discriminating them is just doing the total opposite yeah. Yeah. so just understand the situation you don't have to discriminate you don't have to yep. say anything good but you don't have to discriminate things Something All right. That we face. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to end an episode. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks much, Arvin. Yeah, most welcome. <laughs> Everyone has a different passion and setbacks to pursue their own dreams. And it's all about knowing what's yours and how to come up with a solution when challenges come. I hope you gain tons of value from this podcast and if you like this show it will help us a lot if you share it with your friends and close ones. A big thank you to Arvin for spending some quality time with us. This was a collaboration between Culture Talent and Renegade Radio. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.